This is part two of lesson three. Uh, let's before we do part two, let's let me just go over part one a little bit first. Part one here, we did conditional statement. We look at control positives, and we look at the true value uh, for conditional statement. So, and we also said that a true table that's always have a true value here is a tautology. So now let's look at uh, by conditional statement. Let's review first. Uh, by conditional statement uh, is a statement of the uh, statement P, this statement here, which is uh, P implies Q and Q implies P. Notice that's both direction and it's an intersection of both direction here. It's called biconditional, and we use, use this notation for biconditional. It really has P if and only if Q. Now, P, by conditional, this is to, that means this is equivalent. I can write it in the right hand form or I can write it in the left hand side like this way. Um, P if and only if Q is true only when the components P and Q have the same true value. So let's write it. So have the same true value, P and Q have the same true value means if both are true or both are false. So here, the first one is true, and this is false, false, true. Okay, so this is just standard form for conditional statement. Now let's do question number three. State each by conditional statement is true or false. Again, to tell if the statement is true or false, I, I need to determine whether the components have the same true value or not. So my first component here is this statement is x plus 4 equal to 7. And the second component is x equal to 3. So let's make the first component p, the second component q. And let's find a few numbers and check it. I can make a little small true table if I like. So p, q, let me, so this is p, this is q. I can draw a tiny one, just, you know, just let myself check. So if x, p, if and only if q, so I would have uh, p, if and only if q. Let me write a little better. If q. Now, I can pick some number to test, you know, say to test whether it's true or not. So let me test. Well, from algebra class, we, we say that we can solve the left-hand side. So if I saw the left-hand side, you will see that x is 3. So if, if x is 3, I know that, let's say, x equal to 3, I would have true for both of them. Right? True, true. Well, true, true in the biconditional is true. Okay, so the value is true. So I know 3 will work for both of them. What if a number that's not 3? Well, pick any other number. Let's say I pick uh, 5. Let's say x equal to 5. Let me write a little bit about x equal to 5. Well, when x equal to 5, let's think about it. 5 plus 4 does not equal to 7, so it's false. This is uh, second one. 5 is not equal to 3, so it's false. Well, false, false in a biconditional here, we have 2. Well, so now we notice it doesn't matter what number you plug it in. If you plug in a number that's not 3, it will be false. So therefore, this false, false, it will give you true. So this statement is always true. This statement here is, this is always true. So this is statement ax plus 4 equals 7, if and only if uh, x equals 3 is a true statement. So the given statement is true, a true statement. Okay. Now let's look at part B. Part B, again, I'm going to break it, break it my PQ. We don't have to call PQ, but here, I can just call PQ. I'll make statement 1P, one, one state what to uh, this second part here, and Q. Again, I see that is if and only if, which is biconditional. So I, I'm going to use the same thing that I did in previous ones. Let me just write a little small, tiny true table for it. So I have uh, my P, I have my Q. And I know it's biconditional, so P if and only if Q. And I'm going to draw a tiny one here. And I'm going to make a column for X. And let's make X here. Let me like make the table a little better. Okay. So let's think about the 
inequality that's given in the first component, which is P. My first thing, which is P. P, well, x plus 5 is square root of 7. In algebra, we kind of solve for it, right? Let's kind of solve for it to see what we get. To solve this, I could just subtract 5 to both sides. So x is great. Uh, let, me, let me write a little better. So x plus 5 greater than 7. And I can subtract 5 to both sides. So here, I would have x greater equal to uh, 2. I know that means the solution for this inequality here is x is always greater or equal to 2. So I know this is, if I pick any number that's greater or equal to 2, the p is going to be true. So uh, let's pick something that is true first. Let's pick 2, since the, my q is a number greater than 2. So let me pick 2, see what happens. So when x is 2, I would have uh, 2 plus 5 give me 7. 7 is equal to 7. So the first one is true, it's first component. And 2 is not greater than 2. Notice that. 2 uh, not greater than 2. So this is false. So therefore, the biconditional is going to be false. Well, the by this element here is false. So the statement must be false. And so this, well, let's say you didn't pick 2 first. I can pick another one just to check. Just, you know, for fun. Let's say I can pick, if I pick a number that's greater than 2, it's going to work for both of them. Let's say I pick 3. Before the determine, let's just pick 3. So 3, 3 plus uh, 5 is 8. 8 is greater than 7, so it's true. 3 greater than 2 is true. And true, true in the biconditional is true. And if I pick a number 1, let's see what happens. I can pick... If I pick 1, notice that 1 is 6, 6 is not greater than 7, 1 is not greater than 2, will be false for both of them. Okay, so my pick 1, I would have a false, false, so it will be uh, true. So the only number that will make uh, this statement false is when I have x equal to 2. So the, if I have one instance that is false, this statement is false. So given statement is false. False statement. Again here, I could have in the two table here, I could stop in the first step, right? Because I found one that is false. And this is, let me zoom in so you can see the whole uh, picture. Uh, this completes part two of lesson three. Um, I'm going to see you in lesson three.